Today we're talking about the ship that wouldn't sink, ladies and gentlemen, the USS Nevada. Predating both World Wars, it is America's first super dreadnought. As well as the first American battleship to run on oil instead of coal, we won the attack on Pearl Harbor. The USS Nevada was the first ship hit. It was subsequently the first ship to return fire and to down an enemy aircraft. It is also the only one of the eight battleships present to successfully get underway during the attack. Despite being hit by a torpedo and five 250 kilogram bombs, while being on fire and taking on water, the USS Nevada would still manage to rescue sailors from the water of the wreckage of the USS Arizona. It would then go on to intentionally beach itself at Hospital Point. The Nevada would get repaired and upgraded and go on to be the only ship at Pearl Harbor and D-Day. While in the European theater, they would bombard the enemy so much that they would actually wear out the barrels of their guns, at which point they would return to New York to have their ship fitted with barrels salvaged from the USS Arizona. After this, they would return to the Pacific Theater for the invasion of Okinawa, where they were attacked by seven kamikaze bombers, one landing a direct hit. Didn't even come close to sinking it. The Nevada would remain in service until the end of World War II. And that is when things got very, very American. You see, the USS Nevada was almost 40 years old and ready for retirement. So what do you do if you're Uncle Sam? Do you turn it into a giant floating museum like all the other battleships? Nah, there's an unsinkable battleship on the planet, and if anybody's going to sink it, it's going to be him. Doesn't matter if it's ours, he wants a street cred. So in what I can only describe as the most violently American thing I've ever seen, we painted it neon orange and dropped a nuclear fucking bomb on it for funsies. Sorry, for research. This is what would be known as the Bikini Atoll experiments. Fun fact, this is the inspiration for the Spongebob cartoon. You know, the guy that lives in a pineapple under the sea? Yeah, you know, he lives in Bikini Bottom, Bikini Atoll. See what they did there? I'm trying to tell you your favorite childhood cartoon is just a knockoff of Godzilla. Sorry. Uh, anyways, here's the kicker. It didn't sink. How that's possible, I have no idea. I guess you're gonna need something more than a burning, tingling sensation to take out a ship named after the home of Las Vegas. So you just hit your own boat with a nuclear bomb and you didn't sink it. What do you do? Fucking double tap, hit it again. They dropped a second nuclear bomb on it. And apparently the Nevada is made out of Nokia phones because it survived. So now you've got a 28,000 ton battleship that looks like a fucking road cone and is highly contaminated with radiation. It's kind of becoming a problem. So they dispatched every available ship they had to go bombard it. Including one of America's biggest battleships, the USS Iowa. Shooting 16 inch shells away approximately 2,000 pounds apiece. The Iowa and several other ships fired upon the Nevada for five days straight. And were still unable to sink it. A direct hit from an aerial torpedo would finally sink the USS Nevada, ending the story on what is arguably the toughest naval vessel of all time. And I only say arguably because of the USS Lafay, not because of the Bismarck. Nobody cares. Buh, it took the entire British Royal Navy to bring it down. Buh. And even then, the crew intentionally sunk it so it wouldn't fall into enemy hands. Buh. You know what? We sunk our own ship, too. The only difference is we did it after we won. And even then, we did it with more style. Talk to me when you got two atomic bombs under your belt. Merch store and other links are available at thefatelectrician.com. So until next time, quack bang out.